We are becoming a rental nation. That's today's episode. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, when you are done with today's episode, you're gonna learn why more and more people are renting than ever before. And that's good news for you as a rental property investor. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. We try to help you build financial intelligence on this channel. And back in 2017, I left my day job and said, I am all in on real estate investing. I had been buying properties for many, many years. They produced a number of cash flow for me every month that allowed me to pay all of my monthly expenses. So we help you do the exact same thing. We help you build financial freedom. That's the whole goal. So today's show, we're going to talk about a nation of renters. There's been a number of articles published recently talking about the shift in the home market. And we are sitting right now, here's some data for you. We are sitting right now on home ownership being at a 50 year low. 50 year low that's remarkable when you think about the availability of properties when you think about the availability of new construction when you think about the availability of different loan programs over the last 10 years of course which got us into a lot of trouble during the crash but 50 year low right now in home ownership more and more millennials just saying i don't want to buy a property i want to move around i don't want to be locked down i want to rent so again when we see stories like this, they're always couched if you read Forbes magazine or you you know watch the CNBC or something, they'll kind of almost put it out there as if this is scary that, oh my God, are we becoming a nation of renters? And that's terrible, right? Wrong. You know my philosophy, first of all, on owning the home you live in, I believe is a terrible investment. In fact, it's not an asset, it's a liability. So this idea that people are actually not putting money, a huge down payment on a property that they're going to live in, which will not produce cash flow for them, and instead they're renting and they're maybe buying other assets that are producing passive income for them, I see this as a good thing, absolutely a good thing. I also see it as a good thing because me as a landlord and I own many, many properties, this is good news because rents are now going up. In a lot of areas where I've had tenant turnovers, I'm able to go in, do you know, paint, carpet cleanup, put in new cabinets, et cetera, and get it rent, uh, tenant turnover and increase my rent. So rents are going up. The demand for these houses and these areas where I invest is through the roof right now. Tenants are demanding to live in the neighborhoods where I own rental property. So as a landlord, as a passive income generator, this is fantastic news. The demand for rental housing right now is off the charts and exploding. And so the areas where I like to invest in the Midwest, you know, up in Michigan and Indiana and Pennsylvania and Texas and other places like that, where I have a house available for rent after it's been renovated and it's sitting there or tenant turnover, you know, cleaned up and painted and so forth. That's to me is renovated once I've got it, you know, cleaned up and ready to go again. Um, they're renting up with my property management teams very, very quickly. So a house should not be sitting on the market for more than a month before a tenant moves into that property. And so if you're in areas where you've got good jobs, you've got decent school districts, you've got public transportation and new shopping is starting to emerge in those areas, then you are sitting pretty right now. So what happens during a, an economic collapse? People always wanna know. What happens during a, a, you know, some sort of housing bubble? Well, again, remember that housing bubbles are regional. There is no nationwide housing bubble. And if people can't afford to buy a house or if interest rates continue to go up as they are, we should probably see another two rate increases this year alone, makes it even more difficult for someone to buy a house. So what do they have to do? They have to live somewhere and therefore they should rent from you. Again, if it's more difficult to get a loan because that rate increase keeps them out of, the prices them out of it, that really only affects first time home buyers. Most people that are buying their third home, they've got enough money saved up for a down payment. That r little bit of a rate increase is not going to uh, keep them from buying that home. This really is a question of first time home buyers. Rate increases affect first time home buyers more than anybody. When these rates go up, that's good news for us as landlords, because now we can buy these properties where these folks will want to live. They've got a decent job, they work hard, they need a place to live. They're not gonna live on the street. 
and they're not going to buy the place, so they need to rent. This is all good news. This is all good news. Now you say, well, what about a refinance, right? Now these rates are going up. What about I have to refinance this house? That's going to hurt me. Well, hurt you is a relative term. I mean, in the early 1980s, interest rates were at 18%. If you're still able to refinance a property with the leverage in, uh, of a bank or someone else's money, that's not your money. So frankly, a little bit of a rate increase is not the end of the world. In fact, you're still buying that property with someone else's money. You're getting a check from the bank, you're getting it from a private lender, and you're able to go in and invest in that money, in that property. So a couple of points here. Home sales are slagging right now. New construction is in the luxury markets going through the roof. Rate increases are going up. Few and fewer people are saying, I just don't want to own a home. You know, I get out of college. I just, I don't have a desire to own a home. I want to travel. I want to move around, right? The millennial generation, I don't want to be tied down. So they need to rent. You should own the place that they want to rent. And there's three types of tenants. I've done a whole video on the different types of tenants in a rental property. You've got to check it out. It'll walk you through my favorite type of tenant that can rent from me. That's the person I try to target with my rental properties. It's a natural fit, so check out that video. Also, please download our Freedom Cheat Sheet. It's the three-page PDF that'll walk you through how to figure out what number of houses you need in order to achieve financial freedom. It's the thing that changed my life, and I hope it will change it for you as well. So until next time, who cares if we're a renter nation right now? That's good news for you. So go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. I believe it's the number one way to build wealth. We'll see you next time, everyone.